Delighted to welcome to the show Stuart Pearce, MBE, of course, former England Footballing International. Good morning to you. Good morning. Is your head as sore as everyone else's this morning? Well, as luck happens, I don't drink, so it won't be in that respect. <laughs> so, but I'm absolutely delighted for the team and the management staff. I thought they'd done a wonderful job yesterday and uh, give the whole nation a real big lift. Well, indeed. I mean, look, you, you were the man, though, of course, you know, you, you, were, you were comforting uh, Gareth Southgate, you know, 25 years ago after you missed that penalty against uh, Germany. Um, does this sort of lay to rest all of those demons finally? Um, it, it's a strange one, really. I'm delighted that, that the team have beaten Germany. But for Gareth, because of Gareth's mentality, I think, you know, missing a penalty 25 years ago has probably hardened his steely determination, you know, as a manager to, to want to succeed and want to impart his, uh, his experiences that he's had in a good way to this new clutch of players. And I think he's done exactly that. He really has, you know. He does appear to be this incredible oasis of calm, doesn't he? It's like this sort of steely, steely determination and quiet calm. No sort of big ego. Um, and, and when he does the press conferences before and after these matches, it's, it's just oozing sort of, you know, thoughtfulness. Is that what he was like as a player? Yeah, he's always uh, more of a sh sort of studious than certainly uh, blusto like myself, you know <laughs> what I mean? So, um, yeah, he was. He was very thoughtful as a player, thought about the game quite a lot and always, uh, you know, really measured person as an individual. I don't think he ever flies too high, but then again, he doesn't fly too low either. And I think that trait as a manager is fantastic to have. Absolutely. Well, look, we were told you we've got this golden generation. We've got this brilliant squad, incredibly talented players and very young. Uh, so we could be looking ahead to, to years and months. And then... Everyone was a little bit worried that it was a bit of a shaky start to this tournament uh, uh, in the first few matches. Just a bit lacklustre, one nil, you know, all a bit, all a bit boring. Um, they finally pulled it out in the last, well, the last 10, 15, 20 minutes of the match last night. Um, do you think we can go all the way? Yeah, I think the, the good thing for me from a footballing aspect is the fact we can stay in games, we can be patient in games. That is, that is often more important than, than boom or bust. You know, quite often in these tournaments, teams that start fantastically well often don't win it, you know. And uh, if we've got the ability to, to not concede a goal, which we're certainly showing now, that is a, a real great trait to have in any team that's got the potential of winning. I think we can. I, I said before this game that the psychological effect of this victory on the yeah. squad will be absolutely enormous. And, and I think it will be. I think it will sweep us to the final at least. And then from there, it, it's down to us whether we're going to be good enough on the day against a very good side, whoever you face. Well, that's it. Lots of talk about how we've got the easier route after some, you know, some of the giants slayed on the other side of the, the pick, you know, France going out uh, to Belgium and the like. Um, again, you don't want to dare to dream too much and write off teams. We remember, we all remember Iceland a few years back, don't we? Um, you, you, rec you, you reckon our chances against the Ukraine are, are good on Saturday night in Rome, but who do you think we're going to end up meeting in the final? Um, well, I, I tipped Italy before uh, the tournament started as one of the sort of big teams, so I'll probably have to stick with them, but... I think it's a toss-up, really. You know, they're on the same side of the draw as Spain and Belgium and any of the three you would think have got the credentials to get there and cause a big problem. And, that, and you know, that they'll fancy their chances. If they've got, gone through that route and got to a final, they'll think they can win it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going with that confidence. I mean, and how much extra confidence did it give the England team to have 45,000 fans, pretty much all England fans, in the stadium? I mean, although you could see a lot of empty seats, it, it certainly sounded like a full stadium, full 90,000. It did. It's been quite special, actually. I've been in stadiums when they've only had 4,000s and 5,000s in as the build-up yeah. to this. And the, the, the excitement, I think people are so pleased to be back in stadiums now. They make extra noise. And even with low attendances, the, the atmosphere is fantastic. And yesterday was absolutely, you know, it was just wonderful to be in the stadium and, and, and see the players do their lap of honour at the end of it. And rightly so, they got a wonderful evasion. Uh,
Yeah, I've got the sweet Caroline being played. I mean, everyone was singing along and joining in that. I thought the fans were never going to leave the stadium. And will that will that make a difference on Saturday playing Ukraine uh, in Rome? Of course, you know, I mean, depending on how many Ukrainians and English fans who actually live in Italy who were able to go to that match. Five days qu uh, quarantine to, to go there. Ten days quarantine coming back. Not really viable. And those tickets are not going to be targeted and sold online uh, to fans uh, based in England. Will it make a difference if you haven't got a crowd roaring for your team? Um, I, I don't think it will make any difference to Gareth and the team. I really don't. We would prefer it, but um, at the end of that, we've got a potential two games at Wembley. If we yeah. get through that, we've got two games at Wembley with a bumper crowd. So I, I think that's, that's great uh, stimulation to actually get to the semis and final as we can. And what did you make of the England fans? It was a small section. It wasn't the whole fan crowd, the crowd of fans, of course, but booing the German national anthem. What did you make of that? Um, I was quite disgusted by it, to be quite honest with you. I'm very patriotic to, towards my country, but to be patriotic to your, your own country, you've got to respect other countries. And uh, I, I find that quite sad, to be quite honest with you. They're, they're people who probably don't respect England either. Yeah, very, very good point. Can I drag you into some of the footballing uh, politics, though? Uh, we're going to have 60,000 fans watching the semi-finals and the final, whether England are playing or not. Um, the German interior minister said that's highly irresponsible to have so many fans in the stadium. What do you make of that? Well, you sort of, as we've done, all of us as, as you know, members of the public have left it with the medical people to guide us in the right and proper direction that they consider safe for medical reasons. Now, if they feel as though irrelevant to whether how many people are in the stadium or not, safety of people is, is paramount, you know, and I think if you're guided by the medical people, I'm no expert in that side of it, but... Listen, I'll take their advice. If they suggest that having that many people in, in the stadiums is a safe environment to be in, then, then all well and good. And, OK, well, well, was it medical guidance, do you think, that decided that 3,000 or so UEFA officials, sponsors and hangers-on uh, could uh, travel to England without doing quarantine as everyone else would have to do if they were travelling back into this country after a holiday or visiting family or indeed for business? Uh, what do you make of that? There are a lot of people feeling that it's one rule for the bigwigs and another rule for us ordinary fans. What would you say? You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> he said very warily. Dipping off. Right. Tell me what you think the score's going to be on Saturday night before I let you go. Um, I, I think we'll win the game without a doubt. I think um, I'm going for a 3-1 victory. Oh, oh, very, oh, very, very, very confident, optimistic. Excellent. Uh, don't jinx it. Uh, Stuart Pearce, OVE, um, such a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much.